Okay, right. Um, so we're going to start this new unit of um, work for now, and it's on hardware and software. Now, this game's called Pick a Side, where basically you would go from one side of the room to the other um, to answer the question. But um, we can't do that, okay? So what I'd like you to do is just basically say to yourself whether the following is hardware or software okay so this is the first statement this tells the computer what to do is it hardware or is it software the answer is software okay because software is just a bunch of code that tells the computer what to do next statement physical parts of the computer are the physical parts of the computer hardware or are they software? Right, the answer is hardware. Next statement, peripherals. Okay, now peripherals are anything that can be plugged into a computer to enhance its features. So such as a keyboard allows you to type, a printer allows you to print and so on. So peripherals would be in this category. What category are they in? Are they in hardware or are they in software? The answer is hardware. Next, this statement, um, sorry, this used to do everyday tasks such as emails, letters and homework. Okay, so it's used to do anything. So emails, letters, homework. Is it hardware or is it software? So your answer, it's software. Statement five, can, uh, can be internal or external to the computer. Is it hardware or is it software? Can be internal or external to the computer. I'm gonna show the answer, it's hardware. Statement six, system something controls the way a computer works. So is it hardware or is it software? So is it system hardware or system software? Software, well done. Statement seven, the computer is made up of what? Oh, I'm gonna throw something in here. Is it hardware, is it software or is it both? I'm gonna let you decide then I'm gonna show the answer. Five, four, three, two, one. It's hardware and software, okay? Well, say you should be stood in the middle of the room, well, that's up to you. Okay, right, so now we're gonna um, look at the rest of the lesson, okay? And what we're going to do over these next couple of weeks while we're off school, and the work that is expected of you. So for this um, first part of this uh, topic that we're doing, we're going to look at the computer system. Right, so now um, today you're going to understand input, output and processing. You're going to explain how types of um, inputs and outputs work. And by the end of the lesson, you should have shown examples of some input devices and output devices and how they work. And your homework, and yes, you do have homework, is you're simply going to find three examples of storage devices and just briefly explain how they work. Okay, so to show a picture of them and briefly explain how they work, like one paragraph, okay? No more than 25 minutes worth of work. So firstly, what we're going to look at is, well, computers all around us. Now, I've been teaching about hardware and software for quite a long time now. I've been teaching about 12 years. And I think every year this, this question changes. Every year the answers I get change. Now, in one way, shape or another, computers are all around us. How many computers can you think of that you use on a daily basis? Now, what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to pause this video and underneath the video, I'd like you to write a comment of how many devices you use on a daily basis. Pause the video now. 
Right, welcome back. So, I'm going to think of some devices that I use on a daily basis. Well, for a start, I've got a laptop right in front of me. That's how I'm recording this video. And then next to me, I've got an iPad. And I watch TV on my iPad, okay, because I stream British TV. Then, I've been using my, my smartphone to contact people. So I've been contacting people during this school closure on a chat group. I've been emailing people, um, all sorts. So that's already, you know, um, four devices, I believe I use. Um, and sorry, I forgot to explain, I also use a desktop while I'm at work. Okay, so there's lots and lots of devices that we can use. So maybe you can think of some more. Now, input devices. Right, so computer input. So what the computer does is the computer needs information, simply put input to it. Okay, so we type, we point, we click, okay, and we use spreadsheets, we use databases, and all this data is converted from analog into digital data. Okay, so the information has to go into the computer for it to process anything in the first place. Now, so um, input devices, here's a couple of examples for you. So the user will press a physical key on a keyboard, okay? The electronic chip senses the key press and produces digital code to represent the meaning of the key. Then we've got the mouse, okay? So the mouse user slides the um, mouse around and in this movement is picked up by the sensor inside the mouse so like for example here's my mouse so I'm just moving my finger in a circular motion and up and down and left and right and the sensor well sees uses this and moves the mouse in the direction I want it to go in okay so input devices those are devices that put information in to the computer okay so into the computer so what you're going to do now is what other input devices can you think of okay well you're going to put those on a sheet so what I'd like you to do briefly is you're going to pause this video and you're going to complete the worksheet by discussing the types of input devices and how they work so the first one has been done for you on a worksheet now as you can see here I've got some examples that you can look at. So here I've got a keyboard, got a mouse, microphone. Now a microphone is an input device because we speak into it. I've got a touch screen, a games control pad, a scanner. This is a scanner where you get a hard copy of something and you put it on a scanning bed. It like takes a picture of it and saves it for you. A webcam and a graphics tablet. Now, um, do not choose anything like micro, um, sorry, uh, like speakers because they're output devices. The sound comes out. Okay, right. So I'm just going to show you here. Okay, the um, the work that I'd like you to do. So here we are. So this is task one. Okay. So sorry, that's the task that's come up from somewhere else. Here's task one. Right. You can see I've got the picture of the keyboard. And then I explain how it works. Now I'd like you to find three more input devices and briefly explain how they work. No copying and pasting from the internet. Anything copied and pasted from the internet will be marked zero. Okay, then you're going to submit this to me on um, assignments using Google Classrooms. Okay, so pause this video now and you're going to now complete this task and then Reassume the video once, sorry, resume the video once the task is complete. Welcome back. I'm assuming that you completed task one. Okay, so now we're going to move on. Right, so we talked about inputs. Now we're going to talk about processing. So this is the stage once something has been scanned, typed or spoken in using the microphone to a computer. The computer needs to process this data and make it digital, okay? So now the processing can include a number of things. So they might sort something, they might search for something, they might calculate something, okay? 
So basically, here's an example. So Autotune is a software. So you're in a concert of, um, of a world famous singer. The singer knows their voice is a little bit wonky. Okay, maybe they've got a sore throat, maybe they've got a cough. Okay, or maybe they just don't sing that good. And um, they've got some off notes. So what the computer will do, okay, is the computer will process in the system using a microphone and the main sound system is used to correct those duff tones in real time, okay? Now the computer can only do what we tell it to do. So the computer has learned to detect notes that don't quite get where they should get. Therefore, the computer will process that sound and it will correct it. And that's the process, okay? So then we've got the output. So once we've put something into the computer and it's processed, we need an output. Otherwise, there's no point, is there? There's no point in us using a computer. So an output is when we can see the result or we can hear the result, okay? We shouldn't smell it because then that would be dangerous, okay? So we can see the result or we can hear it, okay? So, can you already think of some output devices where you can see the result of something or hear it? Okay? Hopefully you thought of something like a monitor, maybe speakers, headphones, okay? Because with a monitor, we can watch a movie. We can see this presentation. You're watching my video now. With your speakers, you're hearing my voice, okay? So those are output devices. Right, what you're going to do um, now is we're going to look at some examples here for a start. So, here's a couple of examples. So, we've got a printer. So, digital data is sent to the printer. The device then places ink dots on the paper to represent the data. Okay? The computer doesn't know what it is. The computer doesn't know that you're printing a photo. The computer doesn't know you're printing the homework. It's just printing ink dots that represent the data into something that you understand. And it's the same with speakers, okay? The digital data is sent to the sound card. The card converts it to an analog sound signal so you understand it, okay? Right, so what you're going to do now, okay, 20 minutes, you are going to complete the worksheet by discussing the types of output devices. And the first one's been done for you again, so you can see, got some stimuli for you. Like this is in my classroom, an overhead projector, because it will represent the output in terms of light. I've got monitors, printers, speakers, and headphones, or anything else you may be able to think of. Okay, so right, I'm going to end the lesson here by showing you, sorry, apologies, task two. Okay, so task two is appearing now. So here we are. This is a monitor. I've done the first one for you, and you need to pick one, two, three, or four others. Three is perfectly fine. And then upload these onto assignments using Google Classrooms. Okay, I hope you enjoyed your first lesson.